This screencast will get you started using Mathematica by introducing some of the most basic concepts. The first thing you need to be able to do is to enter input into Mathematica. If you're entering into an existing notebook, then you need to be able to insert the cursor so that it creates a new input cell. You do this by moving it to a position where it becomes horizontal. When it's a vertical cursor, clicking will insert an insertion point into existing material. When it's horizontal, clicking will create a new cell. If you're in a new session of Mathematica and have an empty notebook, it will already start with an insertion point. Now, when I type, I automatically create a new input cell. By default, pressing the Enter key will put extra lines into that input, because as you become more proficient with Mathematica, you'll typically want to enter multiple lines of input together. When you have your input ready, you can instruct Mathematica to operate on it by pressing Shift Return. Or, if you have a full-size keyboard, the Enter key on the numeric keypad will do this as well. This instructs Mathematica to take the input, in this case 2 plus 2, operate on it, which it is able to calculate as 4, and return the result. The basic building block of input in Mathematica is the function. So let's start with a simple function. Here the function is sine, and we work out the sine of 3.4 is minus 0 0.2. Now everything in Mathematica has a functional description, and indeed our first piece of input, 2 plus 2, the plus sign is in a sense a special case because we could have entered the function plus 2 comma 2. So everything in Mathematica can be entered in this form. The function takes the following form. It starts with a name, and it's important to understand that the names of Mathematica functions, and indeed all symbols in Mathematica, are case sensitive, but they follow very clear consistent rules. Every name begins with a capital letter and is the full English word unless there is a strong convention that overrides this. We tell Mathematica which arguments are to be passed to this function using the square brackets. So the square bracket says that the arguments follow and the square bracket closing shows that the arguments end. And where there's more than one argument, they're separated using a comma. Round brackets are never used for this purpose in Mathematica. Parentheses are used only to clarify the order of precedence within an expression. So every function follows this same pattern. Name, square bracket, argument separated by commas, and a closed square bracket. Let's do a slightly more involved symbolic example using some typeset input. I'll create an insertion and type my function. In this case, I'm going to do the Laplace transform of an expression, and I'm going to use the basic math palette, which opens by default when you first install Mathematica, to enter the input. So we'll have a fraction, and I can tap between the value fields, and let's have a power. Perhaps we'll have t squared. And now we'll type the other arguments, separated as before by commas, and we're transforming from the symbol t to the symbol s via a Laplace transform and let's evaluate that. And if we review again, it follows the exact same conventions as every other function. Full English words, in this case two words, and each full word begins with a capital, and then the arguments separated by commas and surrounded by the square brackets. You now know enough to be able to use perhaps half of the built-in functions in Mathematica individually. Let's now talk about data and matrix operations. I'm just going to hide the work that we've done so far to make this neater. Mathematica considers lists and matrices and all kinds of data in one highly consistent way. Let's start by looking at a bit of elementary statistics. And here we introduce a new notation. We have the function mean, following the same convention as every other function, but it takes only one argument, which is the set of data that we wish to find the mean of. Lists of data in Mathematica are delimited using this curly bracket. The brace is at the beginning, and there is a closed brace at the end to show the end of the set of data. And each datum is separated from the next with a comma. And we evaluate this, and we find that the mean of this list of data is a 3. 
Whenever you have any kind of data grouped together as a set of points, the list notation is always used. Let's consider a completely different example. Let's look at a set of xy points. Well, in this case, we find we can extend the principle to be a list of points. So we have the curly bracket to show that we have a list of separate points. And each point is a list of values grouped together, which are the x and y coordinate. So we're passing a list of lists. And that is passed to the list line plot function which produces our plot, where our first point was 1, 2, our second point was 2, 4, and our third point was 3, 1. This exact same principle of a list of lists extends to all kinds of matrix arithmetic. Let's look at an example. Here we're going to find the inverse of a 3 by 3 matrix. In Mathematica, a matrix is simply a list of rows where each row is a list of values. So we have this list of lists again. This is the first row of the matrix. This is the second row of the matrix. And this is the third. Each row delimited at the beginning and end by the curly bracket. And the rows together are grouped into a matrix again with the curly bracket. And here's the inverse of that matrix. We can show this in special two-dimensional notation. If I ask it for the cell to be converted into a traditional notation, we can see those laid out in a multi-dimensional form. But it's important to think internally of everything being a list of lists, because this principle extends very easily to three-dimensional data or higher with lists of lists of lists, or lists of lists of lists of lists, and so on. All highly consistent. Now that you know how to use a Mathematica function on either numbers or symbolic expressions or data, you can use the vast majority of Mathematica in basic interactive ways. The main challenge now is to know which function you wish to use. So let's talk a little bit about finding the right function. Your first start is the help system in Mathematica. Under the help menu, you'll find documentation center. The documentation center is a structured collection of around 10,000 pages of information, both documenting the individual functions and also tutorials to help you learn how to use them. At this stage in learning Mathematica, the areas you're most likely to be interested in are going to be the sections on maths and algorithms, visualization, and data handling. Let's look at an example for maths and algorithms. If we pick, for example, statistics, we get a subcategorization that breaks down different areas of statistics. Perhaps we're interested in exploratory data analysis. And within that, we can now find Perhaps the find clusters function is what we're looking for, which does cluster analysis. Every function documentation page in Mathematica follows a consistent structure. We get some quick links to tutorials, related functions if we're not on quite the right function, and at the top of the page we get examples of the basic usage. Below that, there's an expandable area of more sophisticated information on this function. And then below that are many, many examples. The basic examples section is already open. And here we find a simple example of doing cluster analysis on a small list of data. We can copy these examples out into our own work, or we can work with them directly in place. So I could find out what happened if we add another element to this data. And here you can see the two clusters that it's identified within that data set. There are typically examples to de demonstrate the scope, different detailed options, ways of using the function, how it relates to other functions, possible areas where you might get confused or caught out, and some fun examples. The tutorials are structured in a different way. They're much more prosaic, and they lead you through with more explanation from step to step through a typical process of solving a problem using this kind of functionality. The help browser also allows plain text searching. So I could put in here solving differential equations and it will attempt to match suitable pages that I may be interested in looking at. And here, for example, at link two, 
we have a tutorial on differential equation solving. Clicking on this, we now see that we'll typically want the desolve command. And here's examples of solving differential equations. An alternative view for the same information is available via the virtual book. The virtual book gives you a structured list of all of the tutorials available within the help system in an order which you may wish to read from beginning to end, or to look at only at tutorials related to a particular area that you're interested in. And the function navigator tab gives a similar structured tree for the individual function pages. It's also important to know that you can get help on a particular function directly by selecting the function and choosing the Find Selected Function menu item, which is F1 in Windows. And this takes us directly to the right page. There are also several ways to get more basic help, but in a more convenient way while you're working. One is to type question mark, followed by the function that you wish for help on. This will give you the basic usage templates for that function. It also helps you find functions because you can use wildcards. So if I type plot star in the help, it will give me everything that begins with plot. Two other useful quick references are the command completion. If you type part of the command and select edit complete selection, you'll get a list of all of the possible completions that are known to Mathematica. That's control K on Windows. And further, there's a make template option, control shift K on Windows, that will fill in the basic structure of a typical usage of that command. While there is still much to learn to become an expert in the use of Mathematica, these rules are sufficient to allow you to use the majority of the individual functions right now. You should ensure that you're familiar with these principles before moving on to other tutorials in this series.